up and down. And uh, if y'all want to get, you know, move on up closer, uh, this is going to be more like a Bible study. Those of you who are watching at home, I would just encourage our camera folks to just just uh, zoom on in here and get as close as you can. Um, we're going to try and just make this like a Bible study as much as we can. Uh, those of you who have at, at home have um, ordered the books, they are either en route or you may have already gotten them. They, uh, we did ship those out to you. I uh, was really kind of surprised at how many people online in our online community and online audience said, uh, we want to participate in that and ordered books. So uh, we're so glad to have you guys uh, in on this with us. So we're uh, actually starting a book study of Dr. Leaf's book, Dr. Caroline Leaf's book, Who Switched Off My Brain? And I know that, you know, the temptation is to immediately go to, okay, does that mean I'm crazy or does that mean a bad thing? Listen, there are a lot of people in this, in this world right now some of, of you uh, of us are sitting in this room right now uh, that have are dealing with some depression and anxiety and I'm going to say a step further there are people amongst us that have uh, mental conditions now I know that the temptation is to take that as an insult please do not Depression and anxiety is not something to be ashamed of. It's not something that um, that you should be embarrassed of. Uh, it is not something that is an insult. Um, it is a real thing. Uh, we've talked about that for the last three weeks on Sunday morning, that it's real. But the mental condition also uh, can be other things besides that. And so I really felt strongly to talk about healing and restoration specifically in those areas and now that doesn't just limit it to that some of these wednesday night bible studies that we're going to do are going to be on physical healing we're going to you know go in and and talk about that we're going to talk about uh ways to keep yourself well and wellness and uh, health we're going to talk about a lot of different things here but i really felt strongly to start uh with uh this one because <laughs> again like i said i know that it's the tendency is to kind of look at this as a negative uh or something that's you know listen we don't feel odd or weird when somebody amongst us has cancer we feel sorry and are grieved but we don't um we don't feel weird when somebody around us has a heart condition uh, I'll say this, uh, folks that have to be on medication for antidepressants, or we're going to talk about that this Sunday, but if you've got to be on medication for your mental well-being, it shouldn't be any different than somebody that has an asthma inhaler or a diabetic that takes um, insulin. Uh, I mean, I could just keep talking about blood pressure medication. We don't have any problems with any of those, but for some reason there's this stigma in the church that mental health and depression and anxiety is something that is uh, scary. And, and really it's because we don't understand it, but it isn't any more scary than cancer or heart disease or anything else, is it? It's no different. So uh, really what we wanted to get into, and I, I, I agree that there are some people that are awful when it comes to mental health and they just want to medicate everything, put somebody in a corner and leave them and just let them sit there. But then there's people like Dr. Leaf who are spirit-filled, know that God's the healer, come on somebody, and know that there's hope for people that are, that are dealing with all kinds of mental conditions, whether it's schizophrenia or paranoia, all the way up to depression and anxiety. And uh, so that's why we decided to go this route. I do not for one second think that this is just limited to just people um, who do have uh, mental conditions. I'm telling you what, Jody and I read this book uh, right after we went through marriage counseling. And you go, wow, Pastor, you went through marriage counseling? We went to a, an ex intensive four-day weekend where you're spending eight hours a day uh, doing exercises to discover things about yourself so that you know what you have to work on in your marriage. And uh, we have a great relationship with the facilitator. We knew her beforehand. And uh, the lady that puts it on, 
and she wants to come and speak at our couples retreat whenever we do it and i'll just tell you right now she'll blow your mind i wish it was dr leaf but uh, she's good friends with dr leaf and she's the one that turned us on to this book and there are things that you're going to read in here that you'll say that applies to me right now absolutely does and so um don't anybody you know read this if you can't read this and say you know what and, and see if it does apply to you uh climb down off that high horse because everything we're going to talk about in here is going to hit you right between the eyes don't everybody get all quiet all at once in the brain got it see you see what i did there so um so that's what we're doing uh hopefully did everybody get their their copy of their book jody had them here sunday if you haven't got a copy of them all right if you haven't got a copy of them make sure i think we still have them here i think we have a few left over that we do have them so if you did if you if you ordered a copy and you don't have it with you fine bring it with you next wednesday we're going to have it with us every wednesday and the staff's going to help me teach this it's not just going to be me sitting up here uh um and uh if you haven't got one yet you can buy one tonight it's 15 dollars for both the workbook and journal and the book now you say do i need both of them i would encourage it because the things see now when, when we did this the first time jody and i they, they didn't have this they didn't have the workbook so when you open up our book you can see there's writing on every page right. not just what she wrote it's our there's stuff circled that says oh my gosh and wow and oh man and write, write, write out examples to the side of what that you know is saying to us so so I'm going to say I'm saying all that to pre-qualify us getting started tonight um, into this uh, if you got your workbook I would I would answer these questions in here if I were you she's got questions that she's asking here fill in the blanks things like that all that's going to do is further uh, what you're learning in here you ain't going to get tested on it so don't worry about doing it wrong there is no right and wrong in here this is all just wide open to ever how you want to do it okay now i have if you notice i do have two microphones sitting here because i am going to be asking you to share now here's the thing this is not a preaching contest i don't want you sharing some you know wild revelation that you got during this thing i want to know how this ministered to you and i don't want you jumping ahead staff that goes triple for you you are not going to get up here and start preaching in your chapter okay we're in a group discussion here okay we're talking about what we want to talk about that's in this book for us so we're going to ask you to share now i'm not asking I, I don't know it's a lot of pre-qualifying i'm not asking you to to tell us everything that you're uncomfortable telling this is not a therapy session although some of you will get better from it this is i don't we don't need to know everything so don't feel like you got to get up here and say, well, and when I was nine years old and, and, and go into that, we don't need to know everything, okay? But if you say, you know, there was a situation in my life and you can tell me the brief version of it and then say, and she pointed it out in this book when she said this, 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 and this, I had this, you know what I'm saying? I want to hear from you. I don't want to just sit up here and do all the talking, even though right now I'm doing all the talking. Okay, you folks online, um, I believe Pastor Keith will be watching during this during this time. So you're more than welcome to jump in on the chat rooms. If you want to email the uh, online pastor, you just its email is is his email is online at direction church. So if you'd rather if you don't want to get into discussion in front of everybody on the chat room, that's okay. You can just email Pastor Keith online at direction church and join us that way as well now if you'd like to participate in there um hopefully we'll be able to to see what you're saying um I'll, I'll just tell luke right now go ahead and jump on some of those chat rooms and see if anybody else is saying anything that they want to share in here um and we'll we'll get started all right has anybody read the first chapter yet nobody's read the first chapter okay terry said she read the first chapter nobody else has now guys this is going to be a this is going to be a real boring study if you don't read these now you're going to come in here and say, oh, I'm just going to see what everybody else says. It's like book club, right? I'm just going to see what everybody else says. Now I'm just going to lie my way through it. This won't help you, okay? It won't help you if you don't do it, okay? So 
I'm, I, I'm just going to say right now, the first chapter, if you can't do a chapter a week, we need to have a real talk because there's other problems there. The first chapter, are you, are you serious? Are you ready for this? It is uh, 10 pages, and they're little. A lot of them have big pictures on them. This is not, this is not like, you know, college history. You got to read 40 pages, and it's all front and back. No. Actually, it's seven pages because it starts on page three. Okay. Seven little pages. Okay. So, next week, we have chapter two read before you get here. So, we, and, and you, I would encourage you to go ahead and get your exercises done in there. And um, that way we can have a real good discussion next week. All right. First thing I want to say to you. Uh, in this week is the big thing in the introduction and Dr. Leaf comes out swinging and she says this you can think yourself sick not that you're imagining it now let's make that clear because a lot of people hear that kind of say I'm not imagining this that's not what we're saying you can actually put yourself into a place that what you think manifests to where you're sick all right uh, she says this, I have no doubt that you can improve your life by understanding, now she hasn't even got into faith stuff yet, the scientific fact that fear is harmful, but faith can set you free. You can think yourself clever, you can think yourself calm, you can think yourself healthy, you can think yourself out of worry and anxiety. You can think yourself out of bitterness and resentment. You can think yourself into forgiveness. You can think yourself in control of your emotions. And you can think yourself out of stress. Boy, it, wouldn't it be that easy if that was true? <laughs> well, it is. It is true. Behavior, and I want to get some, start getting some feedback here, starts with a thought. How many of you remember getting in trouble when you were a kid? Never. Never did. Jan's shaking her head no. She, yeah. I'm sure you were a pistol, just like me. <laughs> I remember getting in trouble when I was a kid, and it always started, in, and the funny thing about it is I see it in, Pre in Peyton, especially. I can see them wheels turning. I'm like, how's this going to play out if I do this? And the thing about it is, is we all look at that and go, yeah, that's just the way. Yeah. But everything we do right now starts with a thought. Everything we do. Thoughts stimulate emotions, which then result to attitude and finally produce behavior. Then she jumps a little bit and she says, toxic thoughts produce toxic emotions, which produce toxic attitudes, resulting in toxic behavior but they are controllable these toxic thoughts and emotions and that means your physical and emotion and emotional well-being is controllable too i underlined that circled it put stars next to it now i don't know about you i'll, I'll be real i'll throw myself under the bus i've had tendencies in my life where my emotions got the best of me Anybody else? Come on now, the rest of you, let's open up the altar for... Where you do something and you think, you know, I, I think, you know, I, I, I mean, for me, y'all have seen my pictures. I mean, I used to weigh 400 pounds. Uh, that all thought, of, st those kind of things started with, you know, a pizza would taste really good right now. I remember I was working at, for a radio station, and, uh, you know, I always talk about this I sounded like this coming out of the womb well when I was 19 20 21 years old I worked at a radio station and uh, I mean what else what else was I going to do I mean is he, I was going to preach be on the radio I was going to be in front of people in some way shape or form sound like this I had limited options it's not like I can you know my, my first grade teacher always told me you, Brent doesn't know how to whisper just at all because even when I whispered it was like this I mean she was just like I can hear him whisper in the coat room I mean so I was working for a radio station and uh, I would uh, be sitting there and I'd be on the on the air for six and a half hours and 
I'd be sitting there and I would think, you know, it's Sunday night. I'm sitting there playing records. Can't really go very far because, you know, the record ends, you got to start the next one. It's no computers then. This is, some of you young folks have never understood what a disc jockey really is, but it's because you're really jockeying little discs to put the records on. And so, and so you, you know, we played 45s. We didn't even have CDs. We were still playing records back then. Back then. And uh, um, I would start thinking, man, I'm kind of hungry. And then I would, the next thought was, a pizza would taste really good. And then the next thought would be, you know, I bet I could call one of these pizza places and tell them I'll do, throw in a few free commercials for them if they'll send me a free pizza. And the next thing I know, I'm ordering a giant 22-inch pizza, you know, from Tom's Pizza because Tom had a great special every weekend, and he loved it when I would tell everybody about it. And the next thing I know, now I'm going back to the original point here. Next thing I know, I was eating 22-inch pizzas every Saturday and Sunday night. And telling people just for 1995, you just call and tell them that you want the WCMI special, and you get a 22-inch pizza and a two-liter of pop and a bag of chips, all for 1995. Come on, you can't do better than that. And man, I started ballooning up. And you go, yeah, yeah. That started with a thought that went left unchecked. Instead of going, hey. A salad would be, would be better for you. <laughs> Let's just keep eating them free pizzas, free pizzas. And so what Dr. Leaf is really starting to say here is, is that if a thought, a uh, behavior start, starts with a thought, what kind of behavior are we facing in our life right now that started with just us thinking about something? Anybody want to jump in here? I got two microphones. Don't everybody get scared. Okay. Well, let's move on then. She says, what, what is in a thought? Now, I touched on a little bit of this on Sunday morning. What's in a thought? But she says here, it's more than you know. At any one moment, your brain is create, um, creatively performing 400 billion actions of which you are only conscious of about 2,000. Should I read that again? Your brain is performing 400 billion actions at any one moment. And you're only conscious of around 2,000. And I'll propose to you, you're not even conscious of most of those. Your brain, talk about supercomputer. Your brain is going to town right now on things you don't even know about. There are blood vessels dilating in your body right now that your brain is telling it to do it, and you have no idea that it's happening. Sweat glands are opening up. Now, you're probably aware of those because it's a little warm in here. There are things going on that you don't even know about. All right? As we get on into it, she says, emotions that regularly release a torrent of destruction, ke uh, destructive chemicals will be the most damaging thing over time. If your brain is functioning 400 billion things at once, some of those emotions are ones you're not aware of too. They are the most damaging. That's why it's important for us to get, get these things and to reel them back in, all right? Research shows that 87%, boy, this, this, listen to me, 87% of illnesses can be attributed to our thought life. What? 87%. 13% are diet, genetics, and environment. Let's get that, let's flip that back. 13% are from diet, exercise and the environment you live in that means 87 percent of illnesses can be attributed to what you're thinking about all the time studies conclusively link more chronic diseases also known as lifestyle diseases to an epidemic of toxic emotions in our culture these toxic emotions can cause migraines hypertensions stroke cancer skin problems diabetes infections and allergies, just to name a few. That's, a, that's awful. 
But if you think about it, doesn't that sound like the way God made us? I mean, do do, do you think God made you to be a, 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 a subject of whatever comes your way? Like you're just supposed to be subject to whatever comes your way? But yet we think we are. And we lay down pretty easily sometimes because we're conditioned to do that. This is why this is so important to get a hold of. I know it sounds like, man, Brent, you're just throwing out a lot of stats at us. If 80, 87% of the way you feel right now is based on what you think, don't you think that's important? Something that we really need to get a hold of. All right, let me read this to you. Despite all marvels of modern high-tech medicine and decades of innovative research, there are illnesses. These illnesses are increasingly worldwide. Even more frightening is the med- that medical science has directly linked emotions such as depression to an increased ri- risk of cancer and heart disease. Studies also point to direct correlation between anxiety and fear and heart palpitations, irritable, irritable bowel syndrome, tension headaches, and heart problems. Quite simply, there is no longer any doubt that what and how you think, how you, th- what and how you think affect your emotional and physical state. The mi- mind and body are integrally connected. Anybody want to jump in yet? Franny, wait, you got to get on the microphone so the people at home can, can hear you. Just keep that one over there, and then we'll have another one on the other side. Go ahead. She's on a yellow. It is on. Yes, it is. Yeah, it's up. No, this is the red one. Just a quick example. I had a patient in Brazil that I treated. Uh, it was a very, very bad case of cervical pain. And she came to me. I've never seen a patient with a, a muscle tightness that way. So I started working on the patient, and she wouldn't get better. There's nothing that would make her better. First session, second session of physical therapy, nothing was working on her until the day that I started to ask her questions and I found out that uh, she, you know, after a while the patient starts talking to you, she was being abused by her husband. And that was the cause of her physical pain. So once we started, we sent her to a psychologist for, for counseling as well. That's when she started to respond to physical therapy treatments. There's nothing that we could do physical for her to improve pain because her problem was emotional. So once we start treating her emotional problem with the situation that she was, her body started to react to to the treatment. So that goes along with what Pastor was saying. And so what we're, just hang on to it, and then if somebody else needs it over there, you can just hand it to them. Um, just, Just leave it on. Um, the thing is, is now here's the, here's the, the part that we got to make clear. We're not saying that, you know, if we all got to be so paranoid about our, you know, oh my, I got to be so paranoid about my thought life because by doing that, you're stepping over into fear anyway, all right? Your thoughts are obviously everybody has thoughts that go running through your mind. You ever get up in the morning and want to kill somebody? I mean, not, not, not literally, but I mean, you just wake up in a bad mood. We all have those days. And that's the thing that she's getting to is that your thought life is largely responsible for mental and physical health. So here's the thing. If you are unhealthy, it's not because you just got up and one stray thought ran or you had a bad day. What she says is an avalanche of negative thinking is what causes your health to break down. All right? It's normal to have stress in your life. I'm on page six. It's normal to have stress in your life. However, your body is not naturally designed to cope with an avalanche of it. Thus, your body is 
uh, is averse to the con uh, constant stream of stress that follows from toxic thoughts and feelings. Now, we all want to think, well, toxic just means mad and angry, right? No. It's anything that goes against the health of your body. Sadness is toxic if it's left unchecked. Fear is toxic if it's left unchecked. Obviously, anger is, yes. But let's just talk about, can we just be, without trying to make anybody feel false humility is too that I'm not worthy that's toxic you talk yourself right into not being worthy you know I just want to be humble I just want to you know I get it but if you let that go unchecked you'll, you'll go right past being humble into being unworthy and in the gutter and I just take whatever comes my way I can't I mean listen y'all I've heard this one a million times I, I just am not gifted to do that. Anybody ever said it? I'm I'm just not I'm just not gifted to do that. Don't ask me to do that. I can't do that. Okay, literally that might be so. At that point in time, you really may not be able to do that. But if you throw that excuse out for everything and leave that unchecked that is a toxic emotion that is developing an attitude in your life which is now affecting the way your body performs i remember used to when i was heavy i used to think about it all the time i, I mean i'm hungry i can't do anything about it i'm hungry and people would say you need to just control yourself yeah easy for you to say you're not the one sitting there you know daydreaming of donuts and pizza that's not happening to you it's easy to say that and the thing about it is is I never thought that I could not be hungry. And therefore, I let that run roughshod. Jobs 400 pounds, diabetic, uh, sleep apnea, high blood pressure, had the big three. Because I never thought that I could. Listen, y'all, toxic thoughts are attached to the words can't, won't. And usually I right along with them. I can't. I won't. All right? I am not good enough. Um, the, she, she really brings up a great illustration. Have you ever known somebody who's a really good physical specimen? They're, they work out or they run or they're in good shape or whatever. They go through some kind of major life event and suddenly they come through the other side of it but then they get you know sick they get cancer they get have a heart attack they have some that should not attach to somebody like that and why it's because their emotional well-being completely turned them upside upside down all right let me just read let me read to you what she says um where was it um how many people appear to be in excellent health, but after going through a stressful event, the death of a loved one, a bitter divorce, job loss, whatever, were suddenly diagnosed with heart problems, breathing problems, hypertension, or a range of other ailments? Then she asked this question, and here's where we'll start bringing this plane in for a landing for the first chapter. What about you? You ever come, be, become ill in the wake of difficult trauma in your life? You may not have made the connection, just chalking it up to coincidence. It was more likely that the result of toxic thoughts taking their toll on your health. Now, I, I'm just going to pull a relevant last week example for me. Last Wednesday, the staff knows I was at the, I was whipped. It was a worst, the worst week for me last week. It was awful. It started last not this past Saturday, the Saturday before. It was awful. And then Caleb, well, it started with somebody else uh, on Saturdays, then Sunday, somebody else, then Monday, Caleb told me that he was going to be moving back home. Jody was going in for testing for, uh, most of you don't know about this part, and I'll just go ahead and just be as transparent as possible. 
Um, Jody's Jody got a diagnosis while we were home for Christmas. Um, not really a diagnosis, but it was an alarming. Her blood test came back, and her hemoglobin was less than half of what it was supposed to be, um, which means that the iron in her blood's really low. Something's she's either bleeding somewhere or something's eating it, and um, so that's alarming. Now you put all that in three days. I have to think about my wife's going in for a test that could say she has cancer. Or, you know, I mean, I'm not saying that she, you know, she passed with fine clothes. There was nothing wrong. Just so you know, she went in yesterday. Everything was clear. Okay. So, uh, but rewind before that. I'm having to deal with that. Having to deal with two people leaving the church that you know, people that we really kind of relied on. I had to deal with somebody else in the church being ticked off at me for some reason. And and to just, just to be real frank with you, in light of all four of those things, it's just like, you know what? What, what do I need this for? Now, I'm just being transparent. What do I need this for? And I'll be honest with you, I, I felt, I drove around, I took my own advice, because I preached about being distracted, y'all remember when I preached about that? I spent the whole day Monday in the car, driving all over the place, I went shopping, I went, I try, I just, I said, I'm not going to sit around this house and just let this sit on me. I said, babe, if you need me, call me. But I've, I've got to, I cannot, because I'll be honest with you, it was sitting on me like tidal wave after tidal wave after tidal wave. And I'm telling you, emotionally drained. I mean, just awful. Now, I I also followed my advice for this week because I was writing this week's message in the middle of all that. Don't make any decisions why based on how you feel. Remember, that was just this Sunday, buddy. I was writing that one like talking to yourself you cannot make your mind what you're doing right now you cannot make your mind up right now you cannot make a decision based on how you feel right now i was telling myself that all week long all right now i'm just just gonna be honest with you i got through everything everything you know jody's test and everything came fine but i noticed that in the middle of it well actually coming into last weekend coming into it things were starting to calm down everything seems to be you know fine we're talking to the staff everybody's kind of picking up the slack and and but i saw myself because i've and i i've since june i've been trying not to eat a lot of bread and carbs and i don't drink soda anymore i mean i'm trying to live as healthy as i can with that i noticed i'm fixing grilled cheese sandwiches i ain't had a grilled cheese sandwich in six months Now, now listen, listen. I mean, I I I I noticed that I'm um, having regular pizza. Now watch, I had gone through this really stressful time. Now let me just tell you, physically for me, besides that, I, I mean, this knee has been re- re- not replaced, but I tore my ACL, my MCL, and my in one of the uh, ligament or cartilages so I've, I've I've dealt with a knee issue for years but when I lost all the weight it really helped so um, right now it's good I can actually feel the bones in my legs but when I'm not eating good these knees swell up like balloons I can sit there and just feel pockets of just fluid in there and so I noticed I'm going somewhere I noticed I came through that stress and I let myself just dip. And I I got up Sunday morning to come to church and I felt like I was 67 years old. Now, if you're 67, don't hate me. That's 20 years older than me. So I my knees hurt, my back hurt, everything, my shoulders, everything in me was hurting like crazy. And you go, well, maybe it was all the bread. I, I don't have celiac disease. I don't, I'm not gluten intolerant. I'm just worn my body out for be, being stupid for 40 years and when I don't take care of myself 
I noticed my blood pressure was back up. I started note, and that was just from coming through stress and allowing myself to dip. Now, I'm telling you that because I, I don't want you to feel condemnation about it, but I'm telling you, you can think yourself right back into the things that you used to be. And, and almost justify yourself doing it. I was like, well, I've been stressed. It's okay. I deserve this donut. I deserve this big piece of Marco's pizza with extra sausage on it. It's been a stressful week. Talk myself right into it. Right into it. And, uh, and that's what we're talking about. That's why it's important to understand how these thoughts work. And how to cope with them. All right, we need to, we need to land this plane because it's 8 o'clock. All right. She says this. As you can see, the right thoughts help nurture and create a positive stronghold in the memory trees of your mind. Now, this is the chapter she does start talking about the memory trees. And I would encourage you to read that. Um, but listen to this. According to the American Institute of Stress, between 75 to 90% of visits to primary care physicians result from stress-related disorders. The choice is yours, she says. The choice is yours. All right? When you're under stress, the hormones uh, not done with, on, or destruct, let me read this. I'm just going to read it to you. Um, if you feel a sudden jolt of fear, your hypothalamus secretes, now see, she does use big brainy words here, so you have to kind of get through that. But when you see what she's talking about, it blows you away. Uh, the hypothalamus secretes a hormone called CRH, which doctors have dug, dubbed the negative emotion hormone. Obs autopsies on suicide cases show 10 times more CRH than is in present brains of people who die from natural causes. CRH travels to the pituitary gland in the brain and stimulates the release of another stress homo hormone called ACTH. That races down to the adrenal glands on top of the kidneys and stimulates them to release the biochemicals cortisol and adrenal and that is not good news when cortisol and adrenal are allowed to race unchecked through the body they begin to have adverse effects on the cardiovascular system causing high blood uh, pressure heart palpitations and even aneurysms and strokes they also attack the immune system making it less able to do what it is naturally designed to do which is protect you from infection and disease scary hormones are not yet done in their destructive path the cortisol bathes the brain's nerve cells, causing memories to literally shrink, affecting the ability to remember and think creatively. This is, this is all things that we, we have to keep in mind so that when we have the days that are bad, we don't let these go unchecked and live there. Guys, it's going to happen. Bad days are going to happen. Bad things are going to happen. It's our response to those bad things and getting this kind of information in our, in our repertoire that's going to actually cause us to think differently going forward and we'll be able to face these things to the end and see them finish. Anybody else want to say anything tonight? Now listen, next week y'all need to come read up and written up so that it's not just... Uh, Oh, well, that doesn't mean it's not. It's the same chapters. I looked at them. Chapter 1 with the little brain guy? You don't have that? Yeah, that's that was one page back. Go on over until you find the first one. Chapter 1, the anatomy of a thought. Okay, find the chapter called anatomy of a thought. That's the, that's the same thing. Because I looked at it to make sure that they, they were the same. They may not be called the same. All right. Well, come right up next week for your... Let's go to chapter 3 then. All right. Look and see what it's called. I want to make sure so that I'm on the right...